What's up everyone? Welcome back to Apple Tree Surfboards and welcome to our beautiful new studio. So uh, please leave a comment in the, the section down below and let us know what you what you think about our new surroundings. This is also our headquarters here in the Netherlands. So if you're ever around, feel welcome to send us a message and you're always welcome to drop by, check out some boards and, uh, and get a coffee or something. So I uh, hope to see you around. Well, from this new studio, we're going to record a whole bunch of new videos and new tech talks, uh, starting with this one today, which is something of a returning subject, and it's about volume in wingboards. We're getting a lot of questions about this. We did a video on the subject. I think a year and a half ago, but because we get so many questions and there's also sort of advancing uh, thoughts on this also with us and also our models de developed a little bit further, we want to do another video on, the, on this topic. So um, I think I said last time, the thing that I keep saying all the time is try to avoid your weight in liters or your weight in kilos in liters uh, as a volume. And the reason for this is the board just like, it becomes really corky and it's right on the surface of the water, uh, making it really susceptible for currents, for chops, um, for waves. It's really hard to control. So either go bigger or go smaller. But there is some things, other things to consider, we now, we now realize. So the first thing I think you have to think about is where do you, where do you ride and what type of riding do you want to do? So for me, I ride a lot on the open ocean which makes it very different for me. If you're more of a free rider, you're on the lake somewhere, um, I think different rules kind of apply. Um, let's say in general, the smaller board you can ride, the nicer it is to ride. The more free it is, the easier it carves, but you're gonna lose your low end ability. And in some locations or in quite a lot of locations, there's not a lot of wind, so you need that low wind ability. In those cases, go with a floating board that's my main thing like you can go with a floating board almost all the time and if you want to go as small as possible so as close to your own weight in kilos in in liters in the board uh, the better it is if you're just riding flat water or you're just riding on, on lakes um, the the issue of riding a board around your weight is not really that big because uh, there is not so much current there's no waves there's usually a lot less chop so it is okay to ride something that is around your weight. I would still advise to go maybe slightly higher, just for safety side, just to get be able to get back home. Um, this advice does change a little bit if you also want to start freestyling. Because if you want to do freestyle, um, it is quite nice to have a lower volume board, um, just because all the tricks become become easier, jumping is easier with a smaller board. But you have to be in a place where you know you're gonna get strong wind. So there's a lot of freestyle locations where there is consistent winds. In those cases, definitely go for a smaller board. My, my advice does stand still there. If you go smaller, go proper small. So in my case, I'm about 95 kilos. My favorite uh, volume to ride is 60 liters. So it is almost 35, 40% under my weight, which seems a lot, but this is a volume that I can just super easily sink. I can actually push it underwater. I don't have to crawl onto the board. I grab the board and I push it under and put my knees on it, grab the wing, get some power and, and start going. So for me, going under your weight, go proper under your weight um, in, in any case. So if you're more uh, into wave riding and you're more into open ocean riding, I definitely advise for advanced riders to go experiment with a sinker style board. Um, the only thing is that you're probably gonna end up buying two boards because you're gonna need a board for those lighter days. If you still wanna wing, you need something that floats. If you wanna have the ultimate performance when the, when the wind is strong and the waves are bigger, you really want that sinking style board. It's just so much easier to ride. It's so much nicer to carve and in everything, it's a much nicer board. Um, in general, that's, that's the advice that we would give you. Of course, there's other things to consider, like the board shape. 
uh, does really make a difference. So I've got an Apple Skipper here. In this case, it's a 65 liter, so it's around my ideal uh, size. But the Skipper is quite a longer and narrower style board. Uh, plus, it has a bottom that's really efficient through the water. So this type of board for me, I can easily ride quite small. I know with this board, if I sink it and I grab my wing and I get enough power to get the board to the surface of the water, I know I can get it on foil as well because this board is so efficient through the water, it will just gain speed and gain speed and just like you pump it a little bit and, and you go onto foil. Um, if you have a wider board, so let's say a Jazz for instance, is a really, it's a much shorter and wider package. The difference is that the, the shorter and wider board will be easier to get to the water surface, but once it's on the water surface, it's not as easy as this to get up to speed. Um, so yeah, you can ride it actually smaller than this because you can get it to the surface easier, but yeah, you do need some wind to then get it going. Uh, and in our uh, collection, the slice is right in between. So it's the sort of ultimate balance between a free ride board, uh, a wave board, and you can also freestyle on it. But that's a, so, so that's sort of, yeah, that would be around your 60 liter as well for an ideal size uh, size for me. If then I look at a floater style board, now the, the skipper is not designed as a floater style board. So this type is definitely a sinker. For me with the Jazz, I tend to go for the 95, which is around my weight. And then for the, uh, or the, the 90 actually, it's the 90 is the biggest size in the, in the Jazz. And I tend to go 95 in the slice. If I want a board that's really, really, really low wind, look at the downwind boards. Because the downwind boards, again, you need a board that, that can carry your weight. So you need that volume. You need at least your weight uh, in volume, but then it's way longer. So in my case, it will be 7.7, seven, 7.3, seven, seven, those type of boards. But though, those are so efficient, you can literally get going in no wind at all. It's a similar volume, completely different shape, completely different uh, area where it works. So this volume discussion will keep on going. Um, please leave all your comments down below. We try to answer all the questions that you have. If you have more questions concerning volume, also drop them down below because we'll, we can make new videos. We can talk about it. We're also planning a discussion with our team riders to see with them, to ask them what the, how they feel about riding volume, but also maybe with more beginner riders who are not so competent, give them a couple of boards to try, see what they feel. So that's the type of videos we want to do on this. Keep the discussion open. Things will change, opinions will change. Um, it's a cool discussion to have. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we hope to see you in the next one. We're going to make a ton of more videos, kind of keep doing this. So uh, drop your comments, follow our channel, Check out all the other stuff that we've done and I hope to see you in the next time. Cheers.